Welcome back to the channel. As you've no doubt heard, today's AI implementations are total energy hogs. In today's video, I'll explain the energy of AI and what we can do to reduce it with a more brain-like architecture. Your brain uses only 20 watts of energy, while an AI server farm might use a million times more. How do we account for this huge difference? And what can learning about the human brain and its graph-like information structure tell us about how to slow AI's voracious energy appetite? I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. Beyond AI, I've developed software for neurological test instruments and neural simulators. I created the Future AI Society to explore how neuroscience can inform smarter, more human-like AI. If you are interested in this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell because the YouTube algorithm won't surface videos like this unless you ask for them. In many of my videos, I've explained how the brain's information is organized as a graph of nodes connected by edges, so that the fact Fido is a dog would be represented by two nodes and a single edge. By simply observing how our minds work, we quickly conclude that our brain's graph also supports reverse relationships and inheritance, so that when we learn that dogs have four legs, we also know that Fido has four legs because he inherits that attribute from dog. Further, the graph supports exceptions, so it can easily represent that Tripper is a dog, but Tripper only has three legs. Taken together, these features represent a huge mechanism for data compression because the only information you need to know about Fido or Tripper, or anything else, is what makes that thing unique. All other knowledge can be inherited on the fly. Because computer memory today is so cheap and efficient, this data compression on its own doesn't impact energy requirements very much, so let's look at how this information is accessed to see the huge difference. In this video, I'll focus on the graph's huge energy advantage in retrieving information. Next time, I'll show how this leads to even greater advantages over machine learning when putting information into the graph. In last week's video, I introduced two fundamental types of searches your brain performs continuously across its internal graph of knowledge, perceptual search and attribute recall. Perceptual search is what happens when you see several attributes in your visual field and you want to know, what is this? The attributes might be facts, like what has a collar and four legs, or they might be fragments of an image. These features form the seeds for a search for the closest matching nodes within the graph. Attribute recall, on the other hand, is what happens when you start with a known concept node like Fido and want to retrieve all its related attributes. Has four legs, is a mammal, can bark, etc. Both of these searches are complicated by the fact that attributes may be inherited within the graph. Fido is a dog and inherits all the attributes of being a dog, along with possible exceptions. For example, all dogs have paws. So if Fido is mostly hidden, so you see only his paw, he could be virtually any dog. But when your brain combines this with the fact that he's in your living room, this makes you conclude immediately that it must be Fido. The perceptual search follows relationships in the reverse direction from the arrows in the graph, so it can search downwards in the inheritance hierarchy. Attribute recall follows the direction of the arrow, so it searches upward in the hierarchy. This split means your brain never needs to search the entire graph. These two options, perceptual search and attribute recall, make up the lion's share of computation in the brain's graph because they happen all the time. So we'll focus in on these. Could they be replicated in AI, and would AI then match the low energy levels needed by the human brain? Let's see. Here's the important point regarding energy usage. Both of these searches scale beautifully. 
Why? Because each searches only a tiny portion of the graph. All the seed nodes, the initial search inputs, can be activated in parallel. Then each node fans out signals across all of its relationships simultaneously. So overall search time depends linearly on the number of hops and nothing else. Let me re-emphasize that. It doesn't matter how big the graph is or how many attributes things have, all that matters is the number of hops. And with the graph's data design with hierarchy and exceptions, a small number of hops can be guaranteed. With a well-implemented parallel processing system, the equivalent of an efficient parallel four in software, the time does not grow with graph size. And it need not grow with hierarchy depth either. Consider this example. If you know that Fido is a dog and a dog is an animal, now you want to add the information that dog is a mammal and a mammal is an animal. In a perfectly optimized graph, this potentially would increase the hierarchy depth, but your brain doesn't get caught up in these details and it can simply not eliminate the dog is an animal link. Now the traversal time to higher levels in the hierarchy is unchanged because those same relationships are still explored in parallel. This stands in stark contrast with today's artificial neural networks and large language models. ANNs and LLMs require vast amounts of computation for every search or inference. Their cost grows with the token count, the data set size, the model size, and the length of the context window. Why? Looking at a simple example of a neural network, clearly it does the same number of matrix multiplication operations regardless of the number of inputs which are activated. Even though many of these multiplications are by zero, GPUs have been optimized for multiplication to such an extent that multiplying by zero is just as costly as multiplying by other numbers. In essence, the ANN searches its entire knowledge base for every input pattern, regardless of how simple or complex that pattern is. In contrast, the graph only searches the significant non-zero inputs, so it is doing orders of magnitude less computation. It's easy to see that the graph search time for what is FIDO is unaffected by the amount of information the graph might contain about other animals or even European history. ANNs and LLMs don't achieve this efficiency. In effect, they compute the likelihoods of their entire content base for every search. So even in a simple case like recognizing characters, a graph which recognizes digits just 10 symbols, would run at essentially the same speed as one which recognizes both letters and numbers, or 62 symbols. In contrast, a neural network which recognizes more symbols requires proportionately more computational energy. So while machine learning burns through petaflops and gigawatts, your brain performs its searches in just a few hops across a graph, all on about 20 watts of energy. And an AI based on this architecture could too. Understanding these differences is the key to designing the next generation of AI systems, ones that are not just powerful, but efficient, explainable, and brain-like. And be sure to look for the next video which extends this energy efficiency concept to AI's most energy-dense processing, learning. The Future AI Society is developing software which demonstrates these searches and many other brain-like abilities. I hope you'll join us on this journey towards building AI that doesn't just process information, but actually understands it. If you'd like to follow along, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell because the YouTube algorithm won't surface videos like this unless you ask for them. Then, try out the software and join the community for free to participate in our online video conversations and our Discord server. Check out the links below. And as always, thanks for watching.